Welcome to the NBC Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Do not fear the Chrome Dome. It is your destiny. Oh, I I understand that reference. <laughs> uh, yes, it's about the Kate Baldy. Oh, there you go. Just be a one-punch man. Yay! So, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 7, Episode 19. It isn't the main thing about you. In this episode, Rarity's shampoo is accidentally switched with Zakura's magical removal potion, and she must fix her devastated mane in time for an upcoming photo shoot. Will she succeed? Will she fail? Find out soon. So before we head into the episode review, let's go into first impressions. And Silver, my man, what do you think? Well, it's a fun episode. I can't say that it's a standout one. Basically, it it relies on a sitcom opening to lead to the main conflict, and then it's just sort of trying to fix the problem, culminating in the highlight, which we'll get to when we talk about it in depth. But you just sort of feel, I feel like there wasn't as much of a character to this story as it was just a set of events to get everyone to have a good laugh. I see what you mean. I, I felt that this episode was, well, into my thoughts now, um, this episode for me was fun the first watch. I was excited, giddy, and lolling all over the place. And on the second rewatch, I was kind of enjoying it, but not to the extent of, oh my god, this is the best episode of my life. And overall, this episode was fun. The setup was a bit predictable and the outcome was predictable too but uh the ending there was out of nowhere so yeah still interesting but before we head into the episode go watch this first because it's a fun one and we'll wait welcome back hope you enjoyed that episode i was waiting for days i was waiting for hours how does that work I don't know, man. The internet. <laughs> but anywho, we start off with the Rose sisters. It's been a while since we last saw them. Are they biological sisters, or is that just their their uh, handle? You know what? That's a really good question, Silver. And in all honesty, I got no idea. And the reason why they're called the Rose sisters, or the Flower sisters, is they sell flowers and they have cutie mark flowers. That's what I understand. I'm more focused that Bon Bon or Sweetie Drops, what have you, she's shopping for a special sum pony because <laughs> they're, you know, just friends. Yeah, and if you see Lyra uh, at the corner there, she's also shopping for some things, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, This holiday is confusing. Honestly, I feel like Filthy Rich, who's also uh, there to get flowers, he really should more be looking for divorce papers. <laughs> We don't talk about relationships, Silver. It's a personal matter, but I do like this setup. So the holiday that the sisters are dealing with is Merdy. Mm -hmm. And I got no idea what Merdy is. Like, it could be Mother's Day, but not really, because you can just use the word mother. So if this is translated to human term, it would be girls or ladies day but still that doesn't really make sense i do know that there is a woman appreciation day right there's an appreciation day for just about everything under the sun at this point eh, probably but still let's get back into ponies so yeah there's a special holiday called merry day so uh, you buy flowers for that special sun pony and the flower sisters are in a tz and in a panic because they got no idea what to do Comes in our hero, Rarity. And she suggests that, why don't you sell the flowers that matches the mane of the person buying them? And the pony can give it to the special some mare that they like. Because it matches their mane color and whatnot. Well, see, I'm looking at a screenshot of all this. If this is a day to buy either like your significant other a treat, the audience is... Almost split 50-50 stallions and mares. 
which is a welcome change because usually we always get the what you call this five uh, percent meal. Of course, what I love is that uh, DJ Pwn Three slash Vinyl Scratch and Octavia are right next to one another. It's like you're buying flowers for one another. Yep, and I do like the callback to the Apple family. Uh, you can see Apple Bloom talking to who was it again? I forgot the uh, wood chopping uh, pony guy. Oh, uh, you know, I'm forgetting his name as well. It's just like the awesome cowboy pony. Yeah. While you try and find his name, I'm going to point out that Feel Free Rich is with his daughter, Diamond Tiara. And I like Diamond Tiara's reaction here. The line here, looks like I'm not the only one who left Mary Day to the last minute. And Diamond Tiara here just rolls her eyes like, oh God. By the way, the stallion in question is named Burnt Oak. Ah, now I remember. Yes, Burnt Oak. But still, uh, continuing on, Rarity comes in with a suggestion, and the Flower Sisters sold everything. And Rarity is here to place an order of lavender for her photo shoot with photo finish. Because she's going to be in the magazine for the most beautiful mains in Equestria. Yes, that's the whole setup. So we go to the second shop, which is a shop full of fans. And Rarity wants a fan to blow her mane or something like that. I got no idea. And Rarity suggests, you know, if you put a display with a fan blowing on a mane, probably it will attract more customers to come in. And true to her word, it does. This is a kind of a big part of Rarity's archetype. Yes, I get to talk about archetypes. Yay. Yay. She's known as the medial, which is a person who serves as sort of a conduit for creativity. She brings out the best in others' creative spirits. She's a guide and uh, and helper in trying to help people express themselves, or in this case, help ponies express themselves. Oftentimes, the medial is represented by a priestess, but in these modern times, I think that we, we look more towards people of prominence in different ways. Rarity is a celebrated fashion designer, business mayor. And so uh, even though she's fulfilling a role that really one could say she worships at the altar of creativity, but she's helping everyone fulfill their best selves by giving them advice. And it's really uh, enjoyable to see. True that, true that. And Rarity here being the pony of generosity does highlight that aspect of her and usually when how do I put this there is such a business where people call upon professionals for help uh, consultants yes consultants are people who do what Rarity does which is help people with their business get it profitable get it up and running just get it profits something like that or they create the illusion of progress and then just end up scamming you out of money uh, yeah, that too, that too. But still, uh, Rarity here is doing it for free because she's doing it for the best interest of the pony that she's helping. Because, hey, you scratch my back, I scratch your back, right? Honestly, you have Spike to do that. <laughs> yes. So, anywho, with the fan shop, business seems to be, I won't say booming, but a lot of customers coming in. You could say the business is blowing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at least it's not filled with hot air. <laughs> There we go. And on the third visit to Quills and Sofas, there's a very specific store. And Rarity here is talking to Devonport. And yeah, um, uh, she's asking for a custom order. And said custom order is a pink, no, a yellow sofa or yellow cream. I, I don't remember what the word she used. And it's to accentuate her colors um, she's playing the color wheel kind of thing and my little nephew has a color wheel and I take a look-see and yes it's true uh, purple is opposite to yellow <laughs> although don't say purple to a graphic designer they'll get all mad at you it's violet you're supposed to say violet ah! don't get all violet on me <laughs> hey just don't don't underestimate graphic designers they mess you up Oh, I have a friend who is a graphic designer. Uh, not including you, but still. <clears throat> Doom and destruction upon all. 
Uh, yes. So with suggestions from Rarity, there's a old granny pony who's interested in a color tone match for her house. Like she wants pink and any other color that they come in. And yeah, uh, business seems to be booming. Yay. Again? Yeah, it seems so because, well, we'll talk about that one later. Last story is Sugar Corner. Rarity wants to order something, some delicious snacks for photo finish. And Rarity just stumbles upon Pinky celebrating the twins' first sneezeversary. And with anything Pinky, it doesn't go well. Nah. Well, it goes fun, but maybe not well for Rarity. Yep. And yeah, she she does the whole stringy spray thing. And you know, those things that emulate Spider-Man's uh, web thingy. You know, yeah, they sell that. Yeah, silly string. It's kind of gross. Ah, yeah. But this one is super sticky. Yeah. And it's all over. It's all over rarity. You. Which is, really, Peaky, you should, that, that stuff is also labeled as toxic? not safe. Yeah, toxic and not safe to be around. F- foals. Yeah, but still, uh, uh, the foals are stuck together. And Pinkie Pie's solution for freeing the twins is... The Gordon Freeman solution. That Pinky, they're kids. You, you don't need to use the crowbar. Well, she can't be uh, that Freeman because uh, she's talking. <laughs> so true. Uh, at least Dana Snow hit crabs. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, the twins are free. And Pinkie Pie and Rarity needs to find a solution. And said solution is with Zakura. They go through the scary forest. And, well, meets up with Zakura and explain their problem. Well, the forest is meant to look scary, but Rarity is scarier. She basically chases everything away. You're looking at me, Buster! Why don't you take a picture? It'll last longer. <laughs> you just uh, you just know that the, whatever the pony of shadows we saw at the end of Castlemania, which now takes on a very different meaning, uh-huh. you just know that the creature is somewhere in this like, I don't even know what's going on, but I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still in Zakura's hut. Which looks a lot better. Oh, yeah. It, the it, the it lantern looks... does help. The lantern does help. The lantern? I know it really brings the room together, but seriously. Oh, there's no lantern. There's only soft light. A soft shading or soft filter. Yes, that's it. Soft filter. <laughs> Not to mention a complete redesign by the staff. Yep. Well, it's less spooky, but in some ways, I guess it almost takes away from Zakura and what she represented. A break from the norm, something that doesn't fit the pony's normal view of things. But really, that's not bad. True. And in this revamp, I think it's more for um, aesthetic and more logical uh, setting. Because how does she live in a tree in the forest? And did she hollow it out? Or was it there and whatnot? So, yeah. Who can say no one knows the secrets of Sakura? Yep, true. But what we do know here is that Zakura says that main magic is hard. Like, you don't use magic on yourself. We've been through this before. Uh, I think it's... Who who was it with, like, besides this? Like, I remember something... Apple Bloom? Yeah, about cutie marks too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in essence, any magic to do with said person is a big no-no. It comes naturally. No argument here, but Sukura really needs to work on her bottle labeling. She yeah. gives them two identical bottles of the same liquid without any labeling. And she's like, wait, I certainly hope these don't fall or else I'm going to feel quite small. <laughs> nice one. You, you know what could solve this silver? A montage? Funny music? Da na 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 If only Rarity scanned it. Oh god! If we're gonna, if we're gonna go that pop culture, <laughs> people are going to be so confused. But I'm just having a laugh. She should have scanned it first, man. For those who don't know, I've introduced Norman to the joys of Subnautica, <laughs> and more specifically, the uh, Neebs Gaming Subnautica, where basically there's like, there's a scary creature. Scan it. <laughs> I, I am not gonna scan it. It's trying to eat me. Well. <laughs> How could I help you if I don't know what it is? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Rarity should have scanned it. 
sorry. Uh, confusion abounds as we as we go with delightful references. I know. Delightful. Yeah. So Rarity was on her way out, almost succeeding before she had to stay and hear the scary story from Zakura. And with that she eked and dropped the bottle, picked it up, and went on her merry way. This was the setup for chaos. Like, yep, like you should have checked. But like we mentioned before, why did Zakura not label them? Why were the potions the same color? Why is anything anything? It all makes no sense. It's a madhouse! A madhouse! I know, and Rarity should have scanned it. That's right, scan it! <laughs> Employee of the month. <laughs> I miss some blacklist. Uh, anyway, Zakura here says, Pinky, you should be on your way because you need to clean up shop. So go. Get out of my place. You're very weird. <laughs> yes. And so she does. While this is happening, Rarity is taking a shower. Ooh, scandalous. And decides to use the quote unquote shampoo that she got. And it seems that said shampoo is. Not the one that she was thinking of. Yes. This isn't the shampoo you're looking for. <laughs> you know what she should have done, Silver? Scanned it? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, <coughs> so, after said disaster, Rarity goes back to Zakura and, well, asks for help. Do something. And Zakura says, Yo, girl, I told you that hair magic is difficult and almost impossible to do. Your hair will grow back within a month, so just wait. And Rarity, not being able to accept her fate, tr just tries to deal. She goes to the Flower Sisters to get her flower, but nobody really pays attention to her. Ah. Yeah, this is the biggest disappointment in this episode. Rarity goes out of her way to help all these ponies, to give them advice and encouragement and sort of boost them up. And then suddenly, because she, she, her mane is, well, on the fritz, let's just say, they're, they're suddenly not giving her the time of day or, or overlooking her. It, it doesn't speak well for the ponies she helped. But the excuse I'm going to give here is because she is in a cloak. She's hiding her face, her features, so the sisters don't really recognize her. And... Her voice here is very soft and timid compared to the normal rarity, which is boisterous and loud. Confident. But then there's the scene where a little kid sees her mane and starts crying and the caramel, who, is he a father? I don't know. He glares at her like, ah, this is all your father. What the hell, dude? T teach your kid to get over this stuff. No comment on that Oh, co comment, Norman. Comment I, away. Don't make I me don't follow. It, it's rarity like that does look scary. Like you have to be there. And if your child is going to be traumatizing, probably. And now Caramel has to pay for therapy bills. Good job, rarity. Good job. Oh, I'm not pinning this on rarity. It's like, kid, this is life. You got to deal with it sometimes. <laughs> probably. But still. So stop uh, being a, cr a little crybaby. Hmm. Going cr to cry now? Huh? Huh? Going <laughs> to? Uh, but still, after said debacle, Rarity goes to the fan shop to claim her fan. And yeah, I don't think that it's working because said uh, Irish pony uh, says like, Hey, uh, us ugly people need to stick together. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that's people trying to be helpful and save us from people who are trying to be nice. Because often that we say just the wrong thing. Well, it's reality. People say the wrong things all the time. It's Can't blame true. Them. Oh, sure, I can. <laughs> Watch me. You, Let's... Irish pony. You said the wrong thing. Me. <laughs> oh, no. Irish pony is feeling hurt. Uh, so Rarity now goes back to Devonport. And yeah, the chair looks awesome. People want to buy the chair of Rarity. And somebody's offering Devonport three times the amount. And yeah, so Devonport, you jerk. Oh, oh, now you're holding people accountable. 
No, because really, no, man. Th- there's mm. a agreement between ponies because the agreement here is Devonport is commissioned or Devonport is making set so far for rarity, and no matter how much other tries to buy the chair off you, you don't sell a book product or a custom product to another person or pony. That's not right. Well, either way, he's an opportunist or just sees the dollar bills right in front of him. But I've had this funny, you know, you're usually, you, you're usually championing ponies against my criticisms. Oh, <laughs> now you know the pop. Let me see your anger. Feed me your rage. Uh, funny story. Uh, I had full paper on once before, and he relates to Devonport. <laughs> For this episode? No, uh, as his favorite pony. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. So him saying that he relates to Devonport and whatnot, and yeah, <laughs> Devonport doing this. Oh, <laughs> but still, Foley is an awesome dude. Getting back on track, Rarity goes to Twilight and Starlight for help, and they both say the same thing. Hair magic is not easy. Like hair magic is virtually impossible. Sa- says the ponies who blast mustaches onto other ponies. That is true. I don't know. Maybe maybe those mustaches were fake follicles. You know what? <laughs> this opened up a whole bunch of contradiction. What? What's the word I'm looking for? Plot holes. Yes, plot holes. Uh, one never knows. It may actually just lead to a discussion of what what were those mustaches really made out of? Season one. <laughs> season one. They're made of season one, which is fun, but still finding its mark. Yep. But anyway, although, hmm, sorry. Although. Starlight, once again, says just the wrong thing. And I love that Twilight's <laughs> giving her the ixnay. Cut it out. Thereby inviting Rarity's wrath. She does look like, with that cloak, she does look like a mad witch. Yeah. And also that crazy eyes. Those crazy eyes, man. Those crazy eyes. But still, Rarity sobs. And Starlight here tries to help. I, I do like how Rarity curls up into a ball under the under that hood. And she looks like a very comfortable kitty cat. She'll start purring soon. <laughs> so, anywho, Rarity's asking for help, and you know what? They they try, they try, and they ruin a poor Crystal Empire stallion. Yeah, I mean that that's just cruel, <laughs> cruel yeah. and unusual. Oh well, still it'll grow back. It'll grow back, but still they they try hard. Uh, from like you mentioned before, Twilight doing her magic, and somehow teleporting a. Main from the Crystal Empire. Trick, uh, Starlight here does her magic and somehow her mane is made of wood and said wood comes from one of Twilight's door. Like, oh wow. And yeah, it just doesn't... Uh, apparently this is more harm than good. In fact, I think Rarity gets a wooden toupee. Yep. Uh, yep, yep. And Although it's a very fine grain. <laughs> yes. It's just a little. Sa- it's maybe it's a sappy look. <laughs> uh, it ain't working for her, man. So you know what? Last resort, Starlight and Twilight does the whole magic thing, and poof, a lot of hair comes, but none that can be used. Before anything could be done, Sakura comes in, saying that, "Hey, I was mistaken before. Your hair is going to grow back normally. Like, don't worry about it. It'll take a month or so, yeah, but it's going to grow back normally." Unless you can time travel and stop yourself from using that shampoo. <laughs> I just like this. <laughs> yep, they're, they're still working on it. Uh, <laughs> they're still saying, Rarity, trust us, it doesn't work the way you think it does. Yeah, especially like, for Twilight. Like Hers is the most tameless of all time traveling shenanigans that she did. <laughs> the, fa- the fact that we now have a scale upon which to grade that is truly surprising. Oh, yeah, true. From um, self-fulfilling destiny to what did you do? You create us a time paradox. Snake. Snake. But anywho, like Rarity is freaking out. She's curling up into a ball. And yeah, and now she's asking for help from the other friends. Uh, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy. And they try. And I do like Applejack's idea. Applejack idea seems very promising, but nah, uh, Rarity doesn't want it. Although we also get to see Big Mac and Sugar Bell having a, a date. 
Ah, uh, really? Well, well, at least they're walking off from the farm together. That means Big Mac is turning down his chores to be with his lady. Yeah, yeah. Which, which says something wonderful. Awesome. Oh, big boys growing up. Big boys growing up. Sugar Bell's getting some screen time and at least got out of that darn town, which is really just a road. <laughs> like Sugar Bell says, well, here's the town. That's about it. <laughs> and then Rarity, I will say she does look pretty styling with a cloud mane. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, portable. Not portable, which I guess this is kind of like uh, hair magic. How does this stuff work? It just does. Can you, get, can you get like cloudy super glue or something? Not sure, man. Rainbow Dash does her magic, but it doesn't work. Now the the last one, Father Shy. I'm I'm always surprised by what Harry can do. He's he's quite marvelous. I know, from big softy to hairdresser, like what cannot he do? That didn't came all right. I don't care. Well, it all works out in the end, I guess. Yep. Although, although when you have to water your hair, Rary just became a ch ch chia. <laughs> oh no! But one thing I forgot to mention: season one, uh, Trixie's first appearance. She has green mane. Oh, green mane! Oh, and that just in insulted a uh, golden harvest. Ah, well, I never. <laughs> uh, but still, next transition we see. Uh, the main, quote-unquote, main six with Starlight going to Rarity's uh, home, trying to cheer her up and make her feel awesome and comfortable. And she's wallowing, eating ice cream, and yeah, poor her. Well, I can kind of empathize. Uh, forgive me if I divert for a minute, because I'm, I'm approaching this episode from someone whose hair has thinned out. <laughs> yeah. And I uh, I went to a hair clinic to see about uh, well you know they they talk about hair club for men or mm -hmm. hair hair surgery. The way they described it is they would drill they would use a robotic arm to drill micro holes in my head <laughs> and transplant follicles from the side of my head, which is doing just fine, and place them up top. And it would be take an entire day. I'd have to be on painkillers. Uh, and I just listened to all this and I thought, this sounds like a bad sci-fi novel. <laughs> We're going to use a, a robot arm to drill micro holes in your head. Also, you can fill in the uh, a thinning hair. And I just thought, you know what? No, it's going to cost thousands of dollars and it sounds totally absurd for vanity's sake. And so I, I, I kind of empathize with Rarity trying to find a solution, but also then that she instead she learns to work with what she has. And a funny trick I've learned since then is that if you cut your hair really short, the thinning line doesn't stand out quite so much. That, it's, it's a par paradox. The less hair you have, the less people notice. True that, Silver. I, I understand. I am, quote unquote, in the same boat. My hairline is kind of receding like you ain't what it used to be dude i used to have a bowl cut as a kid believe me i i actually i used to look like uh that kid from undertale <laughs> uh the, those were the days when we had hair uh like now. Er, but now we're all we're old er, yeah. these kids today so cruel one tip i got from my cousin is that shave of ball like once you go ball, it's cheaper. Uh, I, I don't think I could rock the bald look. I'm yeah. not Dusty Cat. Oh yeah, D Dusty did it well. Like he was in our situation until he gone ball. But oh man, he's rocking it, man. Well, either way. Yes, but either way, it, it's something that stands out. So I appreciate that Rarity once she gets her drive back, just makes it work. Mm -hmm. And how did she get her drive back, Silver? Well, basically, her friends come in and tell her, remind her of who she really is in between ice cream scoops, which is <laughs> Rarity's usual default. Yeah. I, t I tell you, whatever ice cream parlors exist in Ponyville, they can pretty much bank their economy out by Rarity's mood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but the one thing that 
kind of got or kind of sparked my uh, aha button is when Applejack mentioned that you once cut the tail to help a manticore with his mustache, and you you can see the light uh, illuminating or flashing. I'll have to I'll make this correction because I know someone in the comments will as well. Uh, the sea serpent. Stephen, yes. Did I? What did you say? You said the manticore. Oh, yes, my bad. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so Stephen. Stephen Magnet, who would go on to give terrible advice <laughs> about a wedding. Yeah, but anywho, Rarity once cut off her own tail to help Stephen with his mustache. And you can see the light blink or light illuminate and Rarity. And then like, hey, yeah, I don't need to have a awesome flushing mane to be confident and awesome. Look, I'll just dress up as a punk rocker. Yeah. And she said, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anywho, this is the moment where I went nuts first time sewing this. And I also think the second time, whatever. Like, this was just awesome. Well, that's that's the thing. This whole thing seems to be leading up to someone wanted to draw a punk rarity. Yep. So, so they did. And it looks wonderful. It's glorious. That jacket, the the color complements, all of it looks awesome. Yeah. And like, honestly, wow. This, I have to say, I have to say this. My Little Pony is one of those shows where it's, it's beyond normal. Like, it has surpassed its norm. What I mean by that is that usually when you have a kid's show, especially quote-unquote My Little Pony you won't be seeing punk rock. Like, you, you would see, like, just imagine this G3 days, the G3.5, or if you want to go way back, G2. If I'm not mistaken, there is a punk rock pony, but he's male, but whatever. But here, they're not using it ironically. They're using it as part of the character. Like, hey, my hair's messed up. What should I do? What can I do? You know what? I should just roll with it. And punk rock seems to be the in thing now. So let's do it. Rock. Robot rock. And yeah. Rarity goes to all the places that she needs to go. From the Flower Sisters to the fan store and also Devonport. And she's rocking it. And also she is helping a lot of ponies in between. Which again... The medial back in play. And yeah, she's she's rocking it until she realized, wait, if I had Pinky's stain removal, what does Pinky have? Oh no, she has my shampoo. Oh no, Pinky's in trouble. So they all went. Uh, honestly, Pinky took her sweet time with that. It almost took her a day, right? It took her a day just to try and clean the place up. She is unfocused. <laughs> yeah. But hey, her mane is lush. Main is lush and bouncy, and uh, Pound and Pumpkin are looking good. <laughs> yep. I do love that Twilight creates a bubble to protect protect us from the shampoo. We don't want luscious manes. Oh, no. Ooh, get some of that shampoo on Rainbow Dash. She'll look like her uh, G3 counterpart. Oh, no. Oh, it'll, be, it'll be glorious. Oh, no. But anywho, so anyway, after a few months of this... Gravity still being, uh, how does my main look? Is it back to normal? And Applejack says, Rarity, it's been a few months. Your main looks normal. And they, you know, just walking around as friends until Pinkie Pie spots something interesting at the newsstand. And she says, hey, R Rarity, you should take a look-see at Vanity... Van Was it Vanity? I know it's not Vanity fair what is it well let's see here vanity mayor oh vanity mayor all right <clears throat> so yeah although hmm? i gotta say looking at the the cover of this it's one of the few times equestrian text actually is readable to us and all it says is vain vain which i gotta say i wouldn't want my photo appearing on something that says vain yeah i wouldn't say it's readable it's close to what we can understand remember they don't really do the whole spelling thing just because of, whatchamacallit, uh, localization for other countries. But 
you can, but look at those lines. It, it's very a clearly stylized V A I N. You know what? This is something that I do not want to go into because it lead to nowhere. It might be a Rorschach test, but I see vanity. I see vain. It's all in vain. <clears throat> yeah, but still, uh, rarity here is saying, "Oh no, I, I can't take the pressure, man. Like I, I, I was set enough, so I'm not gonna go read it." And Pinky just shove it into her face. And I do like that face they're doing with Rarity. Uh... Well, Rarity's had some of the best expressions this episode. Yeah. And to her surprise, it's her. And she's she was shocked because I, t- uh, Rarity says, I thought I cancelled the photo shoot with Photo Finish. And her friends come in explaining to her that, hey, we call Photo Finish explaining the whole reason and whatnot. And she decided to come and spy on you. Yes, we had her photograph you without permission. Because that's what friends do, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And look, you're in the cover and whatnot. You're in the magazine. Woo! And everybody, and everybody's doing the rarity. Yes, including our dear Derpy. Did she? Who is... Yeah, final shot oh. as they pull out. She's rocking a red and orange and yellow mohawk. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it is, sir. That's cool. And episode ends. So, let's go to final thoughts. Silver, what do you think? Well, this is an episode that really is a showcase for Rarity's expressions and then Punk Rarity at the end. It feels like a lot of this is just sort of spinning its wheels until it can get to the truly memorable meat of the episode, which is, you know, this grand visual and this awesome look for her. And so I feel like it's not a waste of time, but it's not the same time frame there are more flowing episodes that keep your interest start to finish. This one, it feels like you're hanging in there for the payoff, but not necessarily enjoying the journey. Hmm, I can see that. I can see that. And as for me, this episode was a fun watch, but I do, I I won't say I do agree. It's one of those scenarios where it's fun, but you kind of can see the, Conflict happening from a mile away. Oh, it's this kind of episode. So what's going to be the solution? So Rarity has to kind of deal with the problem of, oh, I'm going ball. Oh, no. And like you mentioned before, the payoff is with the punk rock look, which is awesome. It's everywhere. The f- when this episode came out, the fan art was everywhere. I do. I call her Rockety. <laughs> yeah. But like you mentioned before, the expressions in the faces for this one was awesome. I do like the joke with Starlight because time travel. (laughs) You remember that thing I did way back when that almost destroyed Equestria? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Nah. And in the end, it's a fun episode. Like, it shows the best of rarity and it makes you appreciate rarity even more. So, yeah. And you get to see the medial in play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week? Oh, next week. It's time to say goodbye. Oh, no. It is time to bond a fond farewell to friends forever. And so we shall celebrate and review its final issue as the royal sisters come to a disagreement. That, That involves, you know, giant monsters and battles over pie and clucking. Lots of clucking. Okay. I'm confused already. Congratulations. You're, we'll try to build on that. Yep. And I do like the title for this one. Usually, Friends Forever issues don't have a title. But when they do, it's pretty awesome. And in this one, Friends Forever issue 38 is called Battle Royale. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So, anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com with every support you get early access to the review and discussion podcast and that's a week's advance so if you support the show you get a week's advance in the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content Uh, for example the exclusive is this episode we did a derp in the very beginning only the patreon people would know what that is ain't that right silver exactly you only you shall know the grand secrets. Indeed. Deleted contents are shows that, well, they don't get posted online anywhere except for the Patreons. And a huge thank you from me. 
Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lurka Cat, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Marcus, Charles, Ducky Knight, and also Tristan, our newest supporters. Thank you guys, you've been really, really awesome. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill, and I have thinning hair, but you gotta just deal with it. Indeed, and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya! Adios! You know, Silver, this could all be avoided if they just scanned it. But then you'd have to get out of your submersible. But still, you know what it is. I know it's trying to eat me. <laughs> Says it's an aggressive life form. No kidding! <laughs> <laughs>